the thing is, and how much, you know, I find out people in darkness, they look at choices so insignificant. Like, oh, I'm just going, I'm just going to do this. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you won't just do something. But look, there's a lot of people just did a lot of things and bad outcomes happen out of those things. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I just went across the street, boom, car come hit you, boom, something bad happened. I mean, the thing is this world system don't condition when you operate in darkness spiritual darkness spiritual darkness does not have you well aware enough to respect the ideal of making choices you know what i'm saying and not only respect the ideal of making choices but the outcomes that come with those choices that uh if you're not careful of the choices that you make concerning the people you be with concerning the things that you're doing we darkness is all about not making it significant that you do not you know uh I, I'm over here. that you do not consider the 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 situation or uh, you don't consider the uh situation as much as you should but top of this message but are you making God's choices or your choices well here's the thing Jesus, you know, the great is the greatest example of what it means to make a God choice. And it's called the Garden of Gethsemane. You know what I'm saying? This choice of of a matter of life, life or death for him, but concerning him being the Lamb of God to die on the cross to take away the sins of the world. It's a matter of uh, death to he to bring death for we to have life and life more abundantly through him. It's the choice that God that Jesus Christ was put upon concerning the garden of Gethsemane. You know what I'm saying? That he's to live to keep uh, humanity in a perilous, horrific, sin condition situation and don't die or to choose to go to a direction to die on a cross that we may live. Um, It's supposed to be very drastic. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the thing is, here's the thing I want to talk about, you know, God's choices. You know, uh, is what we need to understand is um uh well John 3:30 you know what i'm saying uh that we that we may decrease that he he may increase in us that that ideal dynamic of what that is saying is saying that less of ourselves more of him now we need to we need to understand what how how much is less, you know what I'm saying? And how much more is that unfortunately a lot of Christians are not trying to understand. Yes, it says less of me, more of you, but how much more or less, you know what I'm saying? And uh that I have to become to accomplish what God wants me to do, and how much more I need uh Jesus Christ to accomplish that. You know, that uh, I don't think these days Christians don't take to consideration of that because we have a, let me see, we're in a church system that operates in a passive uh, di a direction concerning truly about more likely engaging the kingdom of darkness. You know what I'm saying? The the, the way we are, uh, we are, you we are uh, uh, projecting our faith. We're not more likely trying to come against darkness. We're not engaging in darkness concerning influence and in 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 a lot of things that you know I see each and every day and shake my head to what is not being done to really counteract the kingdom of darkness. That the church system is in a passive position. That guess what. But and, but the thing is, 
if you believe in this passive position, your choices are going to be framed concerning your performance of being a Christ-like. You know, Christians are supposed to be Christ-like. Like, you know, or how much love is is love. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be simple. Uh, Ephesians 3, the height, you no know, depth, the width, the breadth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Paul didn't put no numbers to it. It's infinite. But if we're allowing a church system that is like showing us a sort of kind of performance to really engage uh, our faith to others on a daily basis, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just if, if it's not performing more engaging in the community, more engagement in everywhere around, then we can make our choices based upon how we're going to do our things. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, like me, I, you know, I go on the street, you know, I go, you know, homeless, you know, to the homeless and uh, to our place over here. And I try to engage, you know, as best way as possibly can on a daily basis, the word of God and stuff like that. But as our, as Christ, most Christians mind frame is on that. You know what I'm saying? Our, as our mind frame, or we like, oh, I'm finna go to the store, or I'm finna go shopping, or I'm finna go do what I want to do, or I want to go do this, I want to go that. But it's our mind frame. When I, if I get in contact with certain people, will I speak the gospel of Jesus Christ? Will I choose to do that? You know what I'm saying? Will I choose to share the gospel to someone when I'm here, when I'm there? You know what I'm saying? It's our mind ready to speak to me our testimony of the impact of Jesus, what Jesus Christ has done in our lives and done in lives that are around us to tell a person that he has impacted my life and I guarantee he can impact your life. You know what I'm saying? Are we ready to engage to make that God choice in spite of not, not you know, the person might reject you, of course, and not like you or you know what I'm saying? And, you know, say something bad to you. But the thing is, uh, but it would, are we leaning towards to make that choice if the, if the situation presents itself? Um, you know, and it's, 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 you know, it's called Romans 12, 1 and 2. You know, I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, pleasing unto God for his reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. You know what I'm saying? You know, this is what this uh, it shows how if we're doing that, God's choices are supposed to come more easier. You know what I'm saying? God, cho I choose to love. I choose to have joy. I choose to have peace. But if those choices become more difficult, there's not enough John 3.30 going on. There's not enough decreasing and increase. See what I'm saying? And in our decrease and increases will factor of the choices that we're going to make if we're going to make a God choice or make our choice. You know what I'm saying? Like Jesus Christ made the ultimate choice. You know, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, and nevertheless means nevertheless of a temporal world, you know what I'm saying? That I am here, could be here today, going tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing guaranteed in the life in this world. Everything is as what Isaiah says, is a vapor, you know what I'm saying? I cannot put uh, my emphasis on something that is temporal. I'm going to do something that is eternal. You know what I'm saying? Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will, I be, I will do. Because the will of God is an eternal uh, position, that I mean, an eternal choice. Eternal choice to make in order to make something that's going to factor something forever and ever and ever is what Jesus made this choice. And this choice, guess what? I call it, the. I look at the scenario from the earth rejected them. You know what I'm saying? People rejected them. You know what I'm saying? The the earth, the earth wanted to get rid of some rid of rid of him, rid of God, Jesus, because Jesus came from heaven. See, watch this, the earth trying to get rid of heaven. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's what this world system is all about, you know, concerning its wickedness, influence, and all this, you know, terrible examples that they put in front of the television and radio and everywhere to get these bad examples for people to follow their wrong example that you don't, that gets you caught up in the earth. These examples you see on television and radio and all this way, trying to get you caught up in a temporal earth that, you know, won't last long and will not fulfill you. You know what I'm saying? And they, they are trying to, and these people are conditioning your mind on the uh, world to make your choices. Make your choices, of course, based upon the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. You know, and it's amazing how, you know, I, I, I was at the library and I see these, I run into, you know, uh, uh, these g girls and, you know, certain how I can, I mean, how they're so, they can make choices and, and, and so arrogantly, you know what I'm saying? The arrogance of how much people make choices that they're sure concerning if they do something negative towards you, a person or something, they sure that, you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, something negative towards somebody and whatever with it. You know what I'm saying? That I saw one uh, the other day. And they're not realizing that their rejection is wrong. They're not re realizing that the choice is wrong of how they mistreat people that they don't know that, you know, they're not trying to question to know and don't realize that they should be in order to truly be a mature person, you have to be a person that communicate with people. You know what I'm saying? You know, people think because I'm quiet and I don't say nothing, you know, I'm, I'm being mature. No, that's not true. You, a person is supposed to communicate with people and make choices of communication and conversating to get to know people, to truly know a person, to make proper judgment to know where that person is at and know what to say to certain people to be a good person in life. You can't be silent and don't say nothing to people and think that you know that this person is a bad person, so I won't say nothing to them. You know what I'm saying? Simple choices like that, you know, people like to make a silence choice. And, you know, and it's sad to what extent when you, you're making these silent choices of how much you can make a great impact positively to a person that needs to understand about people, need to understand that, guess what, there's good people in spite of how many bad people you ran across to in your life. Good people do exist. You know what I'm saying? Your choices that you make concerning God let, will let people know that we need to know if you are the light, you know what I'm saying? We need to be engaging as a light that we can help bring light into people's dark mindsets, dark hearts, that they know they need to know that they need to Christ to help them make better choices of how they treat people and they make you know choices of everyday life. It's what Christians has to show for that pattern consistently each and every day. Of course, not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of God. You need to uh, make God choices to show others in darkness that they can make God choices if they submit and surrender their life unto God. It's a daily task of every Christian should be doing each and every day. An agenda, that should be, should be your agenda, your assignment when you wake up in the morning. Christians, that should be your agenda assignment to make God choices for to be example that they can make God choices. So that's the message. I hope you be on a uh, choices of nevertheless, you're not settling for the nevertheless of this world, wicked world system of temporal nonsense. You know what I'm saying? You're saying not my will, but thy will to eternal life and life more abundantly in heaven, being uh, with your heavenly father up on the throne. That is your, hopefully your choice. And guess what? Your choices are going to get rejected by people just as Jesus. But guess what? It's all about being the light and you can impact lives more greater than God choices. But you will only be about selfishness when you make selfish choices concerning your choices. And that's the message. God be glory. And from heaven, in Jesus' name, amen.